a beautiful blue sky, sunny day, light autumn winds. And uh, I'm out here with Ember this morning, racing her around, trying to tire her out. I think I've done a pretty good job of it. She's down here by the base of this tree, just chewing on leaves and branches. I'm going to try to show you guys how I work with her in the backyard here. And uh, maybe give you some ideas. I've used what I learned back in the 60s how to do it. And uh, I guess it's closer to how uh, Caesar Milan does it. Firm, loving, and understanding of the dog's behavior, its habits, and its nature. So if you use a dog's nature to help you train the dog, you'll be farther ahead faster. Okay, let's see if I can... She's around here somewhere. She's exploring everything. I had her racing through the leaves. I picked up a long twig and uh, was racing it through the leaves and she'd chase it and jump through the sky and uh, try to wear her out. You know, like you would if you had one of those sticks with a little dangly thing for a cat. Basically, I was doing the same thing out here in the leaves. And uh, it wears her out quickly, and then she'll hang around and listen to me more. So, let's see if I can show you a few things that she seems to be doing really well. This is a morning after a wind and rainstorm. She's out here sniffing around. I saw the squirrels out here earlier. They're roaming around looking for their seeds and nuts they buried in the lawn. And I think that's what Ember is keen on. The leaves back here are really piling up. Sometimes it's hard for her to find where the ball went. They got quite a few inches of leaves. And looking up at these huge maples, there's about as much or more than what's on the ground that still has to come down. I'm letting her roam around, burn up some energy, and then we're going to try a little training session here. Hey, Amber. What's up, girl? She's getting pretty good at sitting. <laughs> she likes to just sit and kind of take it all in, too, I think. Huh, girl? Yeah. Here's all the leaves and branches and trees in the forest quaking and shivering in the wind. And then every once in a while we'll just have a shower of maple leaves falling down all over the back of the yard. And she doesn't know quite what to make of that. I prefer training my dogs outside where there's plenty of, of distractions and noises and stuff. Because then you're training them for the real world. You know, like kids, they can behave themselves great at home, in the house. But once you take them out in public, sometimes they just become little hellions if they don't get their way. So, I've always believed in training your dog in the real world. Now, she'll do things in the house right away. Almost before I ask her to, because she's anticipating it. But out here... When there's lots and lots of distractions, noises, uh, leaves falling from the trees. Uh, she has so many things that startle her or, or occupy her mind or draw her attention away from what we're trying. That it really sets up a good situation to make her focus her attention on you, the handler. And pay more attention to you while still taking in the surroundings. I'm sure out here she smells her own little poops that have been buried by the leaves and also the uh, many gray squirrels that are out here roaming around the backyard looking for their corn and nuts they've buried that she senses and can smell and along with the molehills that are like raised tunnels all through the backyard. It's like 
walking across the field of pillows when you walk across the backyard here because of the moles. She's getting pretty good on recall, only she uh, goes 110% towards you, bypasses you before she's able to slow down and come back to you. Uh, we're working on the part where she runs up and stops in front of you, not bypasses you. <clears throat> Let's see how she does. Ember, come here. Ember, come. Look out, here she comes. Yikes. Okay, Ember, sit. Good girl, good girl. Yeah. We're getting the, the sit down. Then after the sit, I'll start working in the uh, stay for uh, a few seconds to a minute or more as she gets older. <clears throat> I've got the leash on her, and it doesn't bother her at all. Sometimes she'll uh, pick up the loose loop that's hanging off the collar in her mouth and just run around with it. She's not chewing on it or anything. She's just carrying it with her, with, which is fine with me. Okay, I got her on the leash. Let's walk. Come. Just play with the leash. Don't let her win. She'll wear herself out. Ember. Sit. No. Come. Whoop. Come. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Stay. Stay. Good. Give her a good pen. See, they come around. You just can't give in. Okay, I've got the uh, leash doubled up in my hand with the loops being as small as the hand grip at the end. I've got her in a sit position and I'm just going to start walking and see if I can keep her on my side. Okay, Ember. Ember, come. Starting out, I want her to just walk beside me. I'm not using the heel command or anything other than come. I've got the leash loose on her, slack. But she'll only feel tension when she slows down or tries to go a different direction. Come on, girl, come on. This is after we've been playing for a while. She's a little tired. She's paying a little more attention to me. It just takes a lot of patience. And she's a little fight there. Ember, come. Come on, girl. Let's see if she'll stop. Ember, sit. Well, she's got that down, Pat. So now I'll reward her. I drop the leash. Good girl. Stay. Okay, there you go. Good girl. Good girl. Pick the leash back up. Hey, Ember, come. Come. Good girl. You got lots of leash. I'm not pulling the leash. It's not tight. So, okay. I'll put her in a sit. Ember, sit. Good girl. Stay. Use my hand to block her field of vision when I say that. Now I'm going to give her some of her favorite little knit bits. Good girl. Feed her, praise her. Okay. You can never over praise your dog. You do it in a calm way. You don't do it excitedly. Because then she'll get excited and break the training. There she goes. Yeah, we've got some gray squirrels here running around. Birds. And then when the wind blows, it rains leaves <laughs> and branches and twigs from the cedars and Douglas fir and such in the woods around us. That's the favorite place the uh, squirrels go to duck out of sight to get into the fence. 
So, yeah, I guess that's it for right now. I try to piece these little sessions that we do together to hopefully make sense, and you can see how I do it at home. Well, as you can see by that, uh, she still got a lot of puppy in her and a lot of feistiness. The best things to do, I think, well, that I found is, oh, you want to come up now? Come on, come up here. Is to uh, wear them out in the morning <laughs> the best you can and get all that stored up energy from the nap before out of them so they're more complacent more ready to uh, follow your lead and listen to you because they play hard and they sleep hard so you want to get them somewhere in between that when they're uh, just more relaxed hi hi yeah anyway i'm looking around here too bad you can't catch these dang molds that'd be awesome I'd get rid of a lot of problems out here in the yard. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm waiting to uh, take my RV in to have the new storage box placed on the rear rack. They have to switch them around because right now I have the big one on there. So, I'm waiting to do that. Once that's done, I'll repack the RV and uh, we will be ready to get out of here, if even for a weekend, to start exploring the state parks of Washington. So we're looking forward to that. So I guess, as always here on Doggone RVN, Amber and I wish you all happy trails and woof woof. Catch you later.